something that I can't wrap my mind around and it's are people who wake up at like 5 30 6 o'clock in the morning are they happy because right now I'm at the moment where I'm about to wreak havoc on Olympus because it's too freaking early to be fair I also woke up grumpy I've had like five hours of sleep I have a shortage of chocolate in my cupboard I'm on my period my tea is way too freaking hot to drink and I had a dream where Henry Cavill was yelling at me stop yelling at me because I didn't read the Witcher books so add all those up you're just like <laughs> also I like broke out in so many pimples like look at this shit bitch if you get lost don't worry I've got the North Star planted smack right on the middle of my forehead I got you homie I'll be your way home Oh my god, I need to go back to bed. This is where we get to this part of the video where I talk about why I'm sitting down, waking up at 5.30, ass crack of dawn in the morning. So last night, I had a dream. Henry Cavill and I, we were sitting in a room together and we were just talking about books because that's what nerds do, right? And then he's like, oh, have you ever read The Witcher? And I was just like, no, I have not. So he was just like, <gasps> I remember him being so dramatic in my dream. He got so angry that I didn't read The Witcher. And he was like, we can't be friends if you've never read The Witcher. Like you, you say you like my show, but yet you've never read The Witcher. What is wrong with you? I mean, I wouldn't mind him yelling at me, but at the same time, I'm a very sensitive person. Listen, I stub my toe, I'm out for a week. I'm a very sensitive person. There's a difference between being dramatic and sensitive, and I am not dramatic, I'm just sensitive, okay? So, Henry Cavill, my dream, here you go. This week, I am reading The Witcher. It's a reading vlog, yay. Don't expect good shit from this video, because you won't get it. So, I'm gonna try to ungrump myself this morning. I will see you guys later. Yes, said the bearded man. At the very beginning, 70 years ago, 
She threw herself into the sarcophagus. We'll end the spell. That is what is usually done with Strigus. We did it. I finished the book within a day. Still fast as fuck, boy. Hey guys, hi, welcome back to this chaotic vlog. We finished the book, we finally did it. And I have a lot of things to say about it. Let's get into a little bit of side notes. Okay, side note number one. Um, I'm going to be talking about the book a little bit in depth. So there's gonna be some spoilers. If you're like someone who's just like out here being like, well, I haven't read the book yet or I haven't played the game yet. So don't spoil it for me. Well, go play the game, watch the show, read the book first and then come back and talk with me and chat, you know? The next thing is, um, um, if I haven't mentioned this before, I'll mention it now. Uh, I swear a lot in my videos, so... And the last and final thing is, is that I am going off on one brain cell at the moment and four hours of sleep, so... What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. I don't know what you're gonna get, but again, it's a shitty vlog. Let's get into this. So, The Witcher, The Last Wish, it was written by Andrzej 
Subkowski, Subkowski. What up? I'm Jared. I'm 19, and I never fucking learned how to read. Anyways, this dude, he's a Polish author. He wrote this in 1948. So just keep that in the back of your mind. It was written a while back. So this book is a little bit different from most books, from most novels. It's actually a collections of short stories, seven short stories actually. It's all separated into seven chunks, seven chapters, and each of the chapters, the titles are the voice of reason. Blah blah blah. Let's go over a little bit about the chapters and the chapter details, and then I'll go over things. I didn't like about it and the things I did like about it and then I'll wrap it up with being like I love you guys bye. The first chapter is called The Voice of Reason the Witcher. This opens up to seeing Geralt of Rivia. He is written as a stoic old grumpy old man. He's not old but like that just doesn't really like people and he's out to kill monsters because that's his therapy i suppose so we open up to him coming into this town and pretty much having a bar fight with like a bunch of assholes who are very racist to him then he was like taken up to go see this one magician lord dude i don't i don't even remember this guy's name but he was pretty much saying like hey we have a job for you the king has a job for you you willing to take it did i actually read this book now i'm <laughs> now i don't know how this goes but what happens is is that there's this princess who's 14 years old apparently she's cursed she's a striga which is like this mutant demonic creature that like kills people she's just becoming a threat to the whole kingdom but the king just really wants his girl back the witcher is like listen she's just cursed, I can break the curse. And so the king's like, as long as you don't kill her, we're good. So in a sense, Gerald ends up fighting this Striga for a few hours or so. He breaks the curse, she becomes back to a princess. In the process, he does get injured. So that's where we leave off with the first story. So that is chapter one. Chapter two, this is where we meet Nevelyn? Nevelyn? He's this beast creature who used to be, be man but was um cursed by a priestess. His story was like a whole thing. So what happens is Geralt is like going through this town and he comes across this garden, this house, and he meets this beast-like creature who invites him in and they're having dinner and then they're just talking and then Geralt is like, dude, what's wrong with you, homie? Like, you you kind of fucked up, man. The beast goes on and tells the story of how he became from man to beast. So apparently he came from a long line of thieves. Like his dad was like a, a mobster gangster thief dude. And so when he died, he left like the whole trade to his son, Nevelin. Nevelin, um, we're just gonna call him beast. He was young at the time. So he was very heavily influenced by his fellow men around him. I should I say pig? They one time came across this temple where there's this priest and but essentially what happens is that they assaulted her they pretty much told him you're not a man if you don't do this so him being influenced by them ended up forcing himself onto her and she cursed him she's like you're gonna act like a monster you'll be a monster so she turned him into a monster and then she killed herself and so then he was saying how well in stories we hear about like how the princess kissed the frog and the frog became turned back into a handsome prince so what I do is I'd open up my home to any poor girl who would want to spend time with me just like talk to me because maybe one day they will love me and the curse will be broken and i can go back to being man you know blah blah, blah. Okay. So during the dinner, after he finished his story, he asked Gerald, he's like, so why exactly are you like going through town? You're a witcher, you kill monsters, are you gonna kill me? And Gerald was like, no, but there's this creature out here who is killing humans and I'm kind of like on a job to go and find out who this creature is. Long story short, there's a vampire who is actually like the companion to the beast who's living with the beast and she's the one who's like going around killing people. And in the end, he and Gerald, kill her and she as she's dying she's like i love you and so then the curse is broken he's back to being a man our third story is the lesser evil this one was my favorite one that i really enjoyed reading this is when we meet renfrey so Geralt comes to the town of blaviken and he um is met with this magician struggabor who is like hey i need you to find this person and kill her for me because you know she's like she's gonna bring doom upon us or some sh bullshit like that Geralt's like i can't do that like that's your problem like no thanks and there was a 
conversation about lesser of two evils and Geralt flat out tells him I can't kill her because lesser of two evils is still an evil so I can't do that. So I was just like, okay Geralt, I see you. I see you homie. You you have like sense of honor and decorum to you. I appreciate that. So we meet Renfri, right? And she's like this rogue princess ex-princess who's out to get revenge on all the people that had wronged her she went through a lot to get to essentially where she is now and so she's got seven men who are like her loyal friends who will do anything for her and so she told Geralt like hey I'm gonna hold this town hostage to get Stregobor to come out so I can kill him are you in and he's like yeah that's between you and him bro like I can't deal with that but in the end it became a thing between those two because he ended up fighting with her and she ended up dying and that was the whole thing I was just like pissed off that I really enjoyed her character and then this author decides to come up and be like sight chapter five the voice of reason the edge of the world so this is where we meet dandelion which for the longest time when I was reading it in book form I thought it was dandelion but then when I listened to it on audible it said it was like dandelion so I don't know how you pronounce his name but this guy is Yeskier, right he's the troubadour the the guy with the strings the mandolin and he's like toss a coin to you witcher that that dude right this was the story that we see Geralt and him help this one village out by trying to get rid of this devil horned beast who's been stealing crops from people so they're paid to go deal with this guy to like kick him out or get rid of him um and we find a little out a little bit more history of their world with i guess like the dispute between humans and elves i suppose so we find out that this devil horn beast he is a satyr and he is stealing these this food and learning the way of farming to help the elves who are starving and dying out there's like a whole thing against them with the race of elves between humans and elves so there was like the discourse between those you know what I mean? Oh my god. Oh, I should not be doing this. So in the end, when Geralt and Yaskier or Dandelion, they get captured by the elves and they're about to be killed, but there's like this prophetess that comes out and she's like, no, you can't kill them. He's a good guy. Don't kill him. So our final chapter is The Last Wish, The Voice of Reason. And this is when we meet Yennefer of Enderberg. And she is pretty interesting. She's pretty cool. It starts off with Dandelion or Yeskir who finds the gin bottle and he he like trying to make these wishes and then he ends up being attacked by the djinn and Geralt manages to tell the djinn to fuck off and then he takes him to her town to try and find a doctor or healer and that's when everyone's like hey we have this sorceress here who can help you blah 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 he meets Yennefer they have a thing long story short Geralt saves her and then they they have a thing going on and they become a thing and that is it of the chapter Something to keep in mind about this book is that it reads more like a collection of fairy tales or stories loosely based off of fairy tales than it actually does a novel. So when I first read it, I was terribly confused because I was just like, where are my plot lines? <laughs> Where's the plot line? Where is this going? And then the more I read it, the more I picked up like, on that it was just a world building story. I thought it was kind of clever, but also kind of risky on the author's part of writing it. It was more of like a world building story story. So we get to meet the different monsters that Geralt has to face. We meet the different characters that Geralt has to face. We meet, we understand a bit more of like the racism between men and elves and the witcher and sorcerers and stuff like that. It did definitely come off as like a video game story, you know? This book actually made me want to play the video game, not the show. I was actually surprised because I, when I watched the show, I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, yeah, maybe I would want to play the video games. But after reading the book, I definitely now want to play the video games because it's so good okay a few things that i wasn't really fond of about this book and i really didn't enjoy reading was the style of writing it was pretty basic but i also have to keep in mind that it was written in 1948 by a polish author so i feel like a lot of writing was kind of lost in translation the representation of women i don't i'm like even at the time like i just don't understand why men like just like the over sexualization of women or how like 
the characters saw women like dandelion kind of fucking annoyed me not gonna lie he all he wanted to do was get laid or like all he talked about was women and their boobies and i'm just like why are you even here one thing i wish i i saw more was the better details of monsters and the different creatures that Geralt had to fight when Geralt was fighting a striga he didn't really go into full-length details or descriptions of like how the beast really fought or really looked they just it was kind of like surface level and i understand it was because these are short stories he didn't really want to take up a lot of time going into lengthy details so i wish though like when we're being introduced to these characters and to these monsters we had a bit more detailed explanation of like how they came to be how they fight their weaknesses their strengths you know this is also my D, D nerdy background coming out i mentioned this once before but dandelion he's so annoying i don't even know what like i get that he's like the comic relief but when i literally am reading stories the stories with just him and Geralt, I'm all I see is the Shrek and Donkey situation. Like, there's just what is the point of having Eskir or Dandelion around? And I'm like, Geralt, for someone who's like comes across as this cold, stoic, badass, you know, grumpy old dude, why are you hanging around him? Like, I don't know. I know they have this history going on, but I I didn't read enough to where I liked Dandelion. So yeah, those are the things I didn't really like about the book. Things that I liked about this book. I I like that how when we meet Geralt, we see him as like this cold, stoned kind of guy who's just here to kill monsters. And we come to find out that witchers are men or people that were experimented on to they have no emotions or human emotions. They emotionless beings that go out and fight monsters. But we come and see how Geralt is actually a soft boy. Aww. This man's a softy. He straight up is calling Dandelion his friend. In the books, he's very soft for Yennefer. I'm editing this and I just can't. Like, why am I saying softy so much? So take a shot every time I say softy. Let's see how drunk you get. So we see Geralt being this softy and he's actually someone who's, he's very honorable actually. When you read about him, just how he talks to people, how he talks with certain monsters and creatures. Like when he was talking with the beast, he was quite polite and very like, an ear listening kind of guy. And almost in a sense, he gives off like chaotic good. Another thing that I liked about this was like the retelling of different fairy tales. I am a ho for fairy tales. I love fairy tales. Just the fairy tale-esque that I got from this book was chef's kiss. I really enjoyed that part. I really liked it. The fight scenes. Okay. I just think Geralt would make a great ballerina because the amount of times that the author put in the word pirouette. I mean, Geralt, like he's pirouetting in and out of these like scenes fighting these monsters. But I think my favorite fight scene would have to be him and the Striga. I was so like caught up into that story that I was like, please don't let this fight scene ever end. Just the way he writes how like he like fights with the sword or fights with his hands or like his magic. I really loved that. I really enjoyed that aspect. I guess that was it. I think I would give this book a four out of five stars. I'm being kind of generous. I almost gave it a 3.7. Again, I feel like there are a few things that I would have loved to see, but I also understand this book was a bit short. I am definitely looking forward to reading the second book and hopefully maybe that I'll get more of what I was hoping for in that. This this was it. Henry Cavill, don't ever yell at me again. I'll throw a book at you. I finished the book. I finished the first book. I will see you guys later. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for staying to the end. You're a real MVP. Be kind to yourselves, stay hydrated, and I shall see you guys later. Bye-bye.